well sort of you know that we are facing significant uh, impacts of climate change already right so there is change in precipitation patterns rainfall patterns and also in temperatures now agriculture is completely exposed to the elements uh, a large part of our agriculture is dependent on rainfall so therefore what climate smart agriculture essentially means is that what are the processes what are the procedures in agriculture that need to be adapted to the changing climate conditions and how what kind of crop choices should we make how should we actually uh, sow our seeds uh, at what time should we sow our seeds what are the crops that should be planted at what point of time during the calendar of the sort of agriculture season so essentially climate smart agriculture is a set of practices that you have to that you must necessarily adopt to tackle the changing climate conditions and the other part so this is about adapting to the changing climate conditions but climate smart agriculture is also about reducing emissions from agriculture so agriculture does cause a lot of greenhouse gas emissions especially uh, crops like paddy and uh, i think what we need to do is start thinking about how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture as well so it's both about adapting to the changing climate and also about reducing emissions from agriculture so there are many pathways to well the links between uh, air pollution water pollution uh, and of course land pollution land uh, degradation with the adoption of agriculture right so if you need more agriculture land you would have to go up land which is under potentially forests or other land uses uh, so that would that could potentially lead to lesser ability of the land to absorb carbon dioxide because forests are carbon sinks uh, if you actually manage to do agriculture in sensible ways then you would not cause well you wouldn't need to use so many pesticides and fertilizers which do cause a lot of damage to our but land but also when they leak through the water uh, into the rivers they actually pollute our riverways as well and of course the air pollution story is quite uh, sort of uh, well known we are i'm sitting here in delhi uh, so if there are climate resilient and climate smart practices i think we would be able to avoid issues around sort of uh, stubble burning as well Well, so so the government of India is actually quite aware of these issues. Uh, the fact that agriculture does cause significant uh, sort of well, agriculture will cause challenges to the environment. But of course, a large part of the population depends on agriculture in India as well. And most of the people doing agriculture, most of the farmers are smallholder farmers. So they're actually trying to make go by, make make a living. by doing agriculture it's not as if we have too much commercial agriculture happening in india so therefore we have to find the right balance between adoption of climate smart agriculture practices uh, but also thinking about livelihoods of the farmers like the, the operations of the farmers so with that in mind the government of india has launched quite a few initiatives for instance there is a national initiative for climate resilient agriculture which was launched at a national level uh, which was which has introduced very creative climate resilient practices in more than 100 uh, sort of uh, locations in india we have a national mission for sustainable agriculture which is a part of the national action plan on climate change which is doing really sort of very innovative work around introducing sustainable agriculture practices we have uh, the gobardhan scheme basically trying to use the sort of well the animal waste the, the waste coming out of animals to produce biogas to actually close loops so the, these are sort of some of the examples where india is actually doing a lot in terms of thinking about how to make agriculture more resilient to the changing climate but also trying to sort of reduce emissions from climate, from ag- agriculture so this is a co benefit of these resilient practices
I think uh, it's a two way street. I think farmers were aware, have traditionally been aware, sure. but they've also adopted practices which are guided by policy. Mm-hmm. Right? So, for instance, the rice wheat cycle in certain parts of the country is driven by minimum support prices for those crops. Mm-hmm. So, and maybe those crops are not suitable for that ecosystem. Uh, so, I think we, we should. Of course, not put the entire onus on farmers. I think policy can actually drive the change for the adoption of climate smart practices. And I think this is where I would like to begin that uh, if we can actually find and I think we are moving in that direction already uh, because uh, there are minimum support prices now emerging for millets, for instance, uh, which are much more hardy, which are much more climate resilient as compared to, say, sort of certain other crops. So that policy driver for adoption of climate smart practices i think should be uh, explored a lot more of course uh, once those policy levers are there farmers would still need to be convinced to adopt those crops because they've traditionally been doing a certain crop and if you want them to shift to climate smart practices they would need to be made more aware so i think for that we have a very strong uh, ministry of agriculture which has extension services down to the level of a panchayat Mm. through the KVKs as well as the ICAR system, the Indian Council for Agriculture Research. So those that mechanism and that delivery mechanism is definitely in place. And in this context, I would also like to mention the recent initiative of the Prime Minister called Lifestyles for Environment, which is a big initiative to raise consciousness amongst consumers as well. So it's not only about the farmers and the government, it's also about the consumers who need to also start sort of consuming the right crops. Well, I think the big challenge is to convince, well, the political economy of agriculture policy is very challenging. I think there are uh, there are political considerations, of course, involved in making these choices. So, and there are different parts of the country which want different decisions because they are politically expedient as well. So I think if you have the political will, and I think uh, we are moving in that direction, we are already making significant uh, sort of uh, steps. We have taken significant steps. So I think the first thing is to actually have reforms which allow you to provide the right kind of incentives for climate smart agriculture. I think that's very critical. The second part is of course about consumer awareness uh, and for that, we have programs like Life, uh, Lifestyles for Environment, but also massive in- investments. And I think we need to, the challenge is now to really keep the momentum going. It's not only about stopping short, doing sort of big events, uh, but also to have continued focus on how to institutionalize some of these things. So I think that's that's critical now. 